Hello, this is Matt Singleton, and welcome to Bible. Ah! <laughs> All right, so um, today we're going to review a video called "Did Augustine Corrupt the Church with Gnostic Doctrine" by Jesse Morrell. And if I mispronounce his name, oh well. Anyway, um. What this is about is this is about a fellow who wants to argue for free will. This fella wants to argue that the idea that man has a corrupt nature is something that was added by the theologian Augustine. And if it weren't for that, then everyone would recognize that we do not have a sinful, uh, dead, evil nature. In theology, we call it semi-Pelagianism, which means that it's, you know, not completely Pelagian, which I know that y'all really care about so far. I mean, I'm, I'm scoring big points here, okay? But basically, you know, it's like the free will, predestination debate, Augustine was a guy who was all bouty bout predestination. Okay, um, I've spent a lot of my time uh, in my theological writings, kind of correcting uh, too much predestination, because I, in my studies, was around a whole lot of Calvinists, and I get around some hyper Calvinists, and you know, I had to correct that. So you know, this is me kind of like you know, you know trying out the other side of the tracks, you know, just trying to uh, deal with this excessive idea. Now, it's not excessive if you're Roman Catholic, but um, basically you have uh, Pelagianism, and then you have various forms of hyper-Calvinism and fatalism. Uh, let's say, we'll, we'll say like deterministic fatalism, that's probably the farthest extent, maybe like a Muslim or something. And then uh, an atheist would be completely Pelagian because they would see that, you know, man can do whatever he wants to do. You know, who's going to stop him? You know, he's got absolute free will. Or some atheists would actually go the exact opposite, too. We're all chemicals, so it's all predetermined. Anyhow, um, the uh, Pelagian view, Pelagius was like, all right, dude, you're responsible for what you do. Don't blame God for it, okay? So don't act like you have some sinful nature, okay? We're all free. We have a free will. We're, you know, if you want to be perfect and without sin, go for it, okay? You do it, man, all right? Now, you know, we'd say some people, you know, they're a little bit stupid here and there, so you know, whatever. But basically, human nature is kind of pretty well good. I mean, we're creating the image of God, so we, we got a good nature, right? And, um, you know, the Augustine, you know, him and Pelagius got into a big fight back in, I don't know, I'm just going off the top of my head, let's say about four or five hundred, eighty, and um, Pelagius seemed to be the loser in that debacle, and then he started hanging out with the Eastern Orthodox, and, I mean, he was British, okay, and he had to skedaddle all the way over to, you know, Eastern Mediterranean, so... Of course, I mean, it's probably better weather. I don't know. Anyway, so basically, um, they, uh, I think it was around the Council of Orange or something, they deemed it heresy. And before that, though, this guy, he's kind of talking about how if you look at the ancient church fathers from the first century moving forward, they all believed in free will. Did a really good job. I mean, really nice camera work and stuff like that. Not just camera work like my guy. But actually, you know, good video graphics and all that kind of stuff um, really had a lot of church history argumentation there. And, you know, I'm not going to put that down. It is very well done. Um, there's a couple things of confusion, though. Um, when we talk about pre predestination and free will, um, there's different subjects that people can get fixated on. And so he's dealing with the early church, dealing with the Gnostics, uh, well, is man's nature corrupt? Well, they would say, like, the Gnostics are talking about a physical nature because they were Platonist. And so 
spirituality is up there and it's always good. And everything physical down here is always bad. And so when they start talking about man's nature, they're talking about man's nature being physically evil, physically corrupt, and stuff like that. Um, that's not really where Augustine's going. And, you know, studying at a Calvinistic institution, um, they did believe in levels of free will. I mean, they, they, they went over it, they thought about it, you know, a lot. And so I, I don't think it's, it's a thing that you can level Calvinist with. Uh, when I was taught church history, uh, my church history professor was a five-point Calvinist, and he admitted that the early church did focus on free will. You don't really see the predestination issue. But you don't really see a concentration on what is the nature of the grace of God. And when Augustine lays down these doctrines, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that he's always right or wrong. I, th I wouldn't accept him as a preacher at my church. Okay, if I, looking at Augustine's theology, I would not accept him. But um, where he's going was a good place. Okay, um, we have... Uh, within us a propensity to sin. And that is something recognized by the Scripture. You know, uh, one place where it obviously shows is in Genesis, to start everything off, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Okay? So that's in his life. The wickedness was great. And that every imagination... See, man, that's like mankind, it's universal. Every imagination and of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And, you know, it said they grieved the Lord in his heart in the next verse. So, basically, from the start, I mean, there's many other passages that talk about uh, man's nature. And we'll, we'll go over some of those. But, basically, there is this evil and the corruption is there. Now, semi-Pelagianism versus Pelagianism would be something to where they, they recognize that there's, you know, that all men have sinned. They would recognize that. But for them, they don't think that it's a wall of separation. Okay, it's not that you cannot get there. You can get there, buddy. You just made a mistake. Okay. And I see, as far as modern semi-Pelagians in evangelical life, um, a lot of teachers with the Church of Christ, I've seen a lot of them argue semi-Pelagianism, and they argue against the sinful nature. Um, typically, though, that's not been a member of the club. Evangelicalism from the Reformation, the Protestants, really has more to do with Arminian versus Calvinist. And the Arminians uh, have that... Uh, they, they recognize that there's a sinful nature. But they would say that God's grace, uh, what they call provenial grace, gives them an ability to overcome that and to have that uh, freedom of choice in the instance of salvation. And that's really where they're focused, by the way. That's the whole thing is, is dealing with salvation and decision and all that kind of stuff. That's really where the debate is focused. Um, but... You know, I don't know if the first century church was really focused on that level. I think they were focused on ethics. You know, so you have to kind of deal with that stuff. But also, um, the big deal is is that I am a New Testament Christian. I go by, I, I agree with the Reformers, uh, Solo Scriptura. And I would also go ahead and agree with uh, the Calvinists, uh, the old days, and um, the regulated principles. And so, be that as it may, when I look at church history and tradition, they can encourage me in my interpretation one way or the other, but they really cannot order me, they cannot have any effect on me, and, you know, it's just an interesting fact, unless there's something else to convince me, like Scripture. If these guys knew the Scripture, and they show me the Scripture, well then, you know, now let's get down to business. But most of the video concentrates on the idea of kind of like, hey, there's semi-Pelagians out there, and you can be one too. Uh, semi-Pelagians, typically, they wouldn't go along with justification by grace through faith alone. They would go with repenting of sin. 
to the point where it'd be really, what I'd say is workspace salvation. You know, as I said, I associate with uh, members of uh, the Campbellite Church of Christ. I think they kind of go along with that idea. And they would say their obedience, their work of baptisms is justified them. Okay? So, um, that's where you go there. With the Arminians, they would believe that you can lose your salvation, especially the Wesleyan Arminians. They would argue that you can lose your salvation, but yet your salvation is by God's grace. Okay? Uh, John Wesley. Um, and they, were, they asked John Wesley what they call a person who doesn't have, um, who doesn't believe in original sin. And Wesley replied, uh, I would call him a heathen. <laughs> All right? In other words, he's not a, he's not a Christian. Okay? Um, so, Arminians, you know, traditionally do believe that. And one of the big critiques, I might get the video wrong. I think I'm still on the same video. But uh, this, the, 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 the person making the film, he's made is that in the institutions, the Arminians don't really have very much of a foothold. The Arminians have a foothold among the evangelists, and the free will people have evangelists on their side, but they don't really have the institutions on their side. And they blame uh, the idea of original sin and all that kind of stuff. They, they say, that's the problem. Okay? And, um, you know, while uh, I'm sure that um, semi-Pelagianism or Pelagianism has more consistency for the free will argument, that doesn't necessarily, you know, um, weigh because that's not what the Scripture's saying. Okay? you got to go with what the Scripture's saying. All right? Um, I think the real problem is, though, is that everybody typically assumes what's called a dichotomist anthropology. Okay? And what that means is, when they look at people, if you've got a body and you got a soul, a soul or a spirit, it's the same thing for them. But there are many people who've argued for a trichotomy. Um, one of my favorite guys uh, who really uh, developed these ideas more and really thought about it more was uh, Watchman Nee. Uh, not that I, I don't really fall under, like, you know, I'm not a follower for anybody but Jesus Christ. Okay, so I don't agree with all of his doctrines, but he, on this issue, he just really thought it out and he worked on it. And basically, um, the instead of it's a body and a soul, it's a body, a soul, a spirit. And in Hebrews 4.12, you can go and look that up, and it'll talk about the division of the soul and the spirit. So they're, they're dividable. <coughs> so the soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And the spirit carries forth, it's a, in other words, the part of you that's spiritual, has intuition, consciousness, and uh, communion with God. Okay? And basically, your uh, soul is where your will is. So we talk about will. Does the soul have free will? Yes. The soul functions. It can choose A. It can choose B. And you really can't get around that because when you talk to people, when you argue with people, you're using free choice, free will. Okay? And so, uh, a good guy... I uh, talked to about that was a guy named uh, Randy Everest. He's a uh, philosopher, goes along with a um, oh, philosophy. Uh, he's got a blog called Possible Worlds. Um, sorry, I just had like a little brain cloud there. <laughs> but um, anyhow, um, middle knowledge. He kind of deals with the philosophy of middle knowledge, Molinism, and that kind of stuff. Well, anyway. Um, so, our soul can will one way or the other, but you have a spirit and you have the flesh. Now, because of what happened in the Garden of Eden, spirit is dead. It is disconnected. It's like um, a camera and somebody's just put something fuzzy in front of it. Now, because of the fuzzy thing, guess what? Everything else, you know, you might see some light coming in, but you really cannot discern it. And so that is the spirit of the natural man. It's just, you know, we're spiritually dead. So now, here's the thing, though. Originally, we're supposed to be spiritual people. So the illustration I would give is, let's say you're in a courtroom, and you have the judge, and you got the prosecutor, and you got the defendant, okay? Well, the, um, 
the spirit was supposed to be the judge, all right? But now the spirit is the defendant, okay? And the defendant is now the judge, and that is the soul, okay? The soul, our rationality, our reasoning, should not be the highest priority. It should be God's reasoning, and the spirit connects us to God. So that's, that's destroyed, okay? And now you have the spirit that can tell you things, but you're spiritually dead. So you don't hear the spiritually dead part, you just hear the flesh. Okay? So you may, as a judge, have free will and say, okay, you're wrong, prosecutor, you're right, but you don't have the other side. You don't have the defendant saying anything. So then where does the will go? Where does the judge go? Evil continually. Okay? He can, he can rule good, and a person who's not regenerate can make lots of good decisions. Lots of them. But there's that spiritual death, and it brings them back to evil. A um, couple passages I wanted to kind of note, to kind of think about. Um, a free will verse, just to kind of, you know, authenticate that there is such a thing, uh, would be Romans 6.6. 6. Turn that there real quick. And it says, Knowing this, no, 6.16, sorry. Know ye not, 6.16, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So there you are, you're choosing the right thing or you're choosing the wrong thing. Okay, so the soul has that free will. Okay, but we go forward. And then um, Romans, let's see here, look at my note real quick. Seven and eight, Romans chapter eight, seven and eight. It says, because the carnal mind, okay, now that your mind is under this flesh, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. All right, because that spirit's dead. It can't follow what the defendant says because the defendant has a bullet in his brain. Okay? It says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye, that he's talking to Christians, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Now you, the defendant's alive again. <clears throat> if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, uh-oh, he is not of him. Okay? So, if you don't have the Spirit, then you don't have a shot. Yeah. Um, a very important verse is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. And it says, But the natural man, once again, without that regeneration, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, so he cannot. All right, that natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Okay, so when I start talking about Bible doctrine, the natural man says, "Wow, this is stupid." And you know, even if I like, when we go over some of this apologetics and stuff, okay, if I start giving evidence for creation or anything like that. You know, the natural man, the natural reactors, what do they do? They just start going off and cussing. And, you know, I mean, they just start getting stupid. Why? Well, because they do not like the answer that I'm giving. They don't want to get to that conclusion, so they're going to fight it. Okay? So th there's that will involved again. It may be a free will, but it's a dead spirit. All right? Um, this problem uh, doesn't get solved. It only begins to get solved once you have the gospel. When you hear the gospel, the Holy Spirit starts drawing on your heart. Okay? Um, it says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Romans 1.16 And And it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. 
Alright, so it's the gospel that we get drawn to the power of God, and only then can we really get a grip on this. Otherwise, we're, you know, a ship without a paddle.